Hello students, I wish you are in a good health. We are going to start the lesson with a general overview to the whole book what you are supposed to know in literary criticism and introduction to theory and practice by Charles E. Bristler. The book consists of 10 chapters. What you are supposed to know is the following. In the end of this book, you are supposed to know the following. First, the meaning of a criticism, theory, and literature. That is in the first chapter. In the second chapter, you are supposed to know a hysterical survey of literary criticism. That is going to start with Plato and end with Matthew Arnold. In the third chapter, we are going to dig deep down in schools. We are going to, first to start with the first school, that is no criticism. In the fourth chapter, we are supposed to know reader response criticism or reader response theory. In chapter 5, we are going to study structuralism. In chapter 6, deconstruction. deconstruction. In chapter 7, psychoanalytic criticism. Chapter 8, feminism. Chapter 9, Marxism. Chapter 10, in new historicism. You are supposed to know all these terms and have a background about all these schools. In this chapter, we are going to study the first school uh, or the first chapter, the meaning of criticism, theory, and literature. What is literary criticism? This is the first question. We are going to answer according to Matthew Arnold. It is an endeavor to learn and propagate the best that is known and thought in the world. What does that mean? It means that we are, as readers, supposed to attempt to learn the meaning of the text and spread it among other readers. This is according to Matthew Arnold. Again, others say discussing any text is a criticism and it is criticism itself is the mental framework that the reader develops concerning any topic through past experience you are going to respond to a to any situation that you are facing now then the present your present and your response, present response, is the made of your past. Again, of course, that is, that is concerned with the truth. Your your frame of where uh, frame uh, your your mental frame of beauty, of religion, of goodness, and that is concerned with all of these topics. Another topic that is the theory. What is theory? What is the meaning of theory in a criticism? In a criticism, the meaning of theory is that the framework of, of, of work that you had in a specific time and in a specific situation because there is no specific uh, theory that exists all along your life with 
or exist as a static theory. A criticism is either theoretical, it is obvious, theoretical is concerned with theories and principles, or practical, that is concerned with applying these principles on on, on texts and trying to uh, make a kind of a criticism to the text you are reading. The other the other meaning uh, or the other element is what is literature? We already studied criticism and there are many definitions to criticism and studied theory and we said that theory is that frame of work that 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 is developed through history or through time. Then what is literature? Again, there is no kind of uh, aggregation on the meaning of literature. What is the uh, what is the origin of the word literature? It, it is Latin word that is derived from letter. And letter refers to the written texts. It does not refer to oral literature. And in this way, we are excluding oral literature from literature. And this is a great loss in reality. If we are going to apply this principle. There is a definition that literature is a body of written work. And in this way, we are including any written work to literature. And this is not uh, not logical or not mm, specified, not accurate. If in such way we are going to include books of geography, history, and uh, psychology into literature, even math, because it is a written text. Again, there is a, there is another definition that any great book is literature. But who decides? First, there is a first question: Who decides that this is a great book? Some said that in the test of time, if if a if a book Past this test of time, past the test of time, then it is a great, a great book. For example, for, uh, still we are reading uh, Homer, still we are reading Virgil, still we are reading uh, Shakespeare, then those are great writers and what they wrote is great. So they are. Or their books are literary books. But in, in such way we are going to consider origin of a species, for example, as a, as a literary book, and this is not accurate. Again, the, some say that any book printed to be published. This is a very general definition. In reality, we cannot consider any book printed to be published as literary work. Any criticism, if we return back to criticism, we have three elements in any literary work. What we are going to deal in the whole book is on these three elements. The reader, the text, and the writer. These are the elements that constitute literature, or the basic elements in a, in a specific or you know, accurate way. These are the three basic elements. Again, the relation among these elements 
constitute criticism? What is the relation of the writer to the text? Or where does the writer live? What epoch? And again, what is the reader relation to the text? For example, if now we read Shakespeare's sonnets, we are not going to understand it as his time readers, Shakespeare's time readers, because of the different mentalities. Again, there is another definition to the works to, to literature that is the work that has the elements of a beauty but in such way we are going to indulge into another question that is where the where does the beauty exist because it is also arguable whether the whether beauty exists in the text itself or in the eye of the beholder we are going to raise another problem if a beauty exists in texts then all of us we are going to agree that this text is great or this text is literary And if the other point of view that the, the beauty is in the eye of the, of the beholder, then there is no, no specific rule we are, or specific principle, specific criteria we are going to, to judge according to it that this is a literary work or not. So, in this concern, we are going to say that literature is a democratic country where you can say all your views, all your views concerning any point because there is no specific truth. There are many truths. And I think that literature is a text or any text that has specific aesthetic qualities and aims to enjoy or because it is not only enjoys sometimes it arouses, arouses uh, horror arouses uh, bad feelings or arouses emotions in such a way we are supposed to have understood the meaning of criticism, the meaning of theory and times of theories, and the meaning of literature. Thanks for your listening, and I wish you got the idea that I am trying to share with you. Thank you very much for your listening.